Okay. All right, guys. Um, thank you for joining us today uh, as a part of our Blues From Home program. Uh, we're doing a quick Q&A today. I'm joined by Sarade Taylor, who will be familiar to a lot of you, um, is a, an NBL1 player with our NBL1 women's team, has been for two years. Uh, also a player with the Southside Flyers in the WNBL. Um, has a lot of other philanthropic ventures, um, of which I don't have time to mention all of them, but is, a, is, is currently studying screenwriting. Um, very artistic, has a lot of um, different interests in terms of writing as well. Um, so thank you, Sarade, for joining us today. Hello, thanks so much for having me, Jared. <laughs> no worries. And our second guest today is uh, Megan Husswaite. So Megan um, is a well-known freelance journalist and writer, uh, predominantly working with the Herald Sun currently, um, and, and the main sort of areas that she's covering are, are the AFLW and also the WNBL, amongst many, many other things. Uh, also, uh, well-respected sort of voice in the sporting community. So we're really, really lucky uh, to have her with us today and, and to be able to ask her some questions. So thank you, Megan, for jumping on for our, for our juniors and our parents and families. Thank you, guys. It's great to be here. Excellent. All right, so I'll launch straight into it. So really today, um, I, I don't have a, a huge format for how, you know, the discussion will go, but I do have a couple of questions that I just want to touch base with each of you. And then I just want to have a general discussion um, about our role as a, as a community association and, and open up some um, some thought processes there. So firstly, Sarade, um, as I mentioned, you're, yes. you're currently studying uh, screenwriting. Mm -hmm. uh, at Victorian College of Arts? Yeah, at the, yeah, University of Melbourne. A little oh, extension. University of Melbourne, sorry. It's okay. the same, same thing, same, oh, yeah. All right. no, you're true. <laughs> okay, and how's that been during lockdown? <laughs> I, I know you've been doing a lot of things via Zoom and things like that, you were mentioning earlier. How's that, has it been going? You've been staying healthy and staying active? Yeah, it's been interesting, Jared. It has been, I think it's such an important component, sort of the artistic um, education that it's a huge part of it is like hanging out with people so to have it all online and being lying on my bed each day <laughs> connecting with lecturers and classmates that way it has been it's definitely been an adjustment um, so I think that's something I've really missed I'm very lucky that, that I'm living with my family so whenever I get too needy and silky I can still go ask a, for a hug from them um, but otherwise yeah it's I think it's really interesting and important that we all keep reaching out in this time because it just fundamentally is isolating compared to what we're all used to. Uh, so yeah, all studies been online, writing away, just really trying to pass time and then stay fit. Yep. So, and yep. so I'll, I'll, I'll segue from that into the staying fit, staying healthy part of it, obviously. Beautiful segue. I provided it right there yeah, for you, you. Megan will be, Megan will be proud of that, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> smooth. Segue. Uh, so you're obviously, you're a professional athlete. Um, you spend your off season with us, which we love and it's terrific. And um, we're, we're really grateful that you do that and, and be a part of that pathway with us. But you would be gearing up now for a WNBL season. Um, that obviously, you know, I don't want to refer to it, the whole sort of um, Q&A about coronavirus and things like that. We know mm -hmm. the situation we're in, but we're solution-based in our mindset. What have you we been are. doing yep. um, in lockdown and what's the preparation for you guys as a whole at Southside at the moment? Yeah, good question. I think it's pretty hard not having access to resources that you're used to be having access to. So, for example, the basketball court is probably the biggest one. Um, and it's a team sport, so basketball court and teammates being able to train against them and train with them. Uh, so for me personally, with lockdown stretched on for so long now, me just trying to, as simple as every second day, going for a five to six K run and try and keep some kind of base level fitness has yeah, been the most important thing because there's so many things that I could be thinking about how much I'm falling behind in and how much I need to be doing and like where I want to get ultimately in my career. Mm -hmm. So to pair it back and just have it staying as fit as I can be, but also using that as an outlet for mental health, I think I would have gone absolutely a little bit loopy by now if I hadn't have been doing that consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Obviously, the Frankston, everyone at Frankston have been so amazing with their skill works for the juniors and for the senior players. Having a ball, having some kind of ground, there's not really any excuses in that sense. Just trying to keep skills up as much as we can in this mm -hmm. very trying time. 
Um, but yeah, ultimately putting our mental health first and foremost is something that I've tried to do, which is tricky. It truly is mm. tricky, but it's important. It is. It is. And, and we're going to have to keep being creative, aren't we? And thinking outside yeah. you know, we continue to stay engaged. And, and that's, mm -hmm. I guess, um, this isn't a scheduled part of our Blues from Home program. A lot of it is just Zoom skill sessions. I did a, a strength and conditioning session with our kids in my lounge room at 8 a.m. this morning, you know, and we're going to have so to good. keep finding ways um, to, to stay engaged. And, and that's, I guess, uh, again, why it's so important for, for us to be able to have these chats and to, to record them and to put them out to our juniors to get them thinking as well and mm -hmm. seeing you're, you're a role model in, in such a massive way for our, uh, a lot of our juniors and our, um, and our athletes. So hearing about how you're doing it and, and um, the way you talk about taking care of your mental health above anything else is, is really, really important because I think we know the importance and we put the message out there and we put the resources out there, but it can often get glossed over when you're talking about a community sporting association, but that's where it all begins. That's where it all yeah, starts. For sure. We need to push that message. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And finally, my final question for you. Um, yes. A lot of people probably know, but may not know that you are a very talented writer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is a passion of yours and, 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 and part of, part of who you are and a part of your profession i'm sure going forward hopefully um that you'd like to explore what are you working on at the moment currently in that space oh interesting uh what i'm currently working on after i got all of my university assignments done which took me a long time i definitely definitely procrastinated that too much um i'm trying to write a novel that's where my dream career is oh can you guys still hear me yes yeah, I think my yeah. little ear pods are saying they're going to die. Um, so that's something I've always, I've always loved books. And that's something I've always just dreamed about doing. A professional athlete and a novelist was always the dream. Um, and I'm obviously studying screenwriting. So that sort of encompasses a different area, but something I'm equally as passionate about. Uh, very verbose way to answer your question. But essentially what I'm currently working on is a novel. And then as part of my screenwriting course, we graduate, so it's my final year, and we graduate with a 60 minute uh, work of some kind that we pitch at the end of the year. So whether that's for television, uh, like a pilot episode of something, or whether it's like the first 60 minutes of a full length feature film, that's what we busy our little selves around doing for this year. And then, yeah, we graduate with that that major project, which we try and hopefully send off into the world and <laughs> hope it comes into fruition terrific oh that's awesome all right Sarade. well as much as i enjoy speaking with you i'm going to keep you on the call i'm not going to boot you off but i am i really appreciate that <laughs> I am really looking forward to, uh, to talking to Megan. Megan, I've, um, I've watched your work over a number of years now and, and um, love the way you write and the way you go about things. And obviously you're, a, you're an award-winning um, journalist and, and writer, um, but I think um, you're a lot more than that, obviously. And, and that's, I, I guess I want to ask a lot of questions. Well, not a lot of questions. I want to ask, ask a couple of really good questions, hopefully around that today and get your insight. Um, because I think that's what's really powerful that comes through in your writing um, from, from what I've taken from it is that your voice is really powerful across sport. Um, and I think you are able to take in a lot of what's happening but I, and digest it and then communicate it in, in a way that's such that it's really um, you, you capture the mood of, of what's happening in sport at the moment, I think. Um, and that's what I want to touch on today. So I want to firstly thank you for, for giving up your time because we've just met now on via Zoom. You, you don't know me from a bar <laughs> of soap. Um, so again, thank you for, for giving up your time and for jumping on for, for our members today. I'm sure there'll be a lot of value in that. Um, I just wanted to ask specifically to begin with, how has lockdown affected your role currently in sports media? Um, well, thank you for having me again, guys, and hi to all the blues that are, are watching um, at home on their devices, and I hope you're well during um, lockdown 2.0. Um, uh, my work life has been turned upside down, that's for sure. Um, I was just chatting to Saraid before we got on and we last saw each other at the end of the WNBL Grand Final Series, and that was probably the last time um, a lot of us saw other people, and that was sort of signalling the end of a really busy period for me over summer with WNBL um, and cricket and AFLW. So 
Um, as you said, I'm a writer, so I've had a little bit of writing um, as a constant throughout this period, which has been great. But I do um, a lot of work in the event space as an MC, um, and obviously there's no events um, at the moment. Although I did get an email today, um, a, a booking for an event in November, so that was really <laughs> exciting <laughs> um, because I miss that. I miss I miss seeing faces and talking to people um, and being in a room with you know, sometimes 1,500 people um, or being at a basketball stadium, you know, that's full for a massive final. So um, that's been a huge, a huge part for me. And I've really missed that, I guess, as a people person as well. Yeah, oh, that's terrific. Yeah. And again, it's, uh, it's an interesting time, isn't it? You, you mentioned you get a booking for something in November, but I'm exactly the same. I find myself now um, as humans, I think naturally we do just kind of go, all right, well, what's next? What's next? And I guess that's the only way to really continue to, to push forward with this is rather mm-hmm. than dwelling on what's sort of happening right now and what's happened previously, we can't control that. We need to take control of that and, and what, what, what's going to happen moving forward. So um, certainly I uh, can appreciate that. I'm, I'm focusing on when I'm going to be able to get back on court or when I'm going to be able to coach the kids again or get back to work as per normal. So certainly appreciate, um, yeah, you, you taking, um, you know, that solution-based mindset, I'm sure. Um, my next question, and, and it's, it's, um, it's probably a big one. It's probably the main one I wanted to discuss with each of you today um, and get both of your perspectives, I guess, um, surrayed from, from an athlete's perspective to a degree, mm-hmm. um, having not, not all that long ago played junior sport and been a part of and still being a part of a community sporting association with Frankston. Um, but then Megan, as your role sort of sitting um, over sport and, and having to um, kind of dissect what happens in sport and what, what's being done and, and report on that, I guess to bring it back to how it relates to us as a community sporting association, obviously at Frankston basketball, we, we pride ourselves on doing a reasonable job in this space. But I guess I wanted to ask what our role is um, as a community association in the advancement of women in sport and I guess a, equality across all sports. After you, Megan, you can, you can take that one first. Sarai's <laughs> letting me take the tip. Uh, <laughs> after you. It's a great question. Um, and, you know, Jared, I think that you and Frankston do um, do a lot of that already and, and you probably may not realise or appreciate how big um, an impact you have in doing that. So um, although we do, of course, have, you know, at the different levels, um, the different tiers of, of grassroots sports right up to professional, there's still so many factors that are the same. So um, whether that's preparation and training and looking after your mental well-being, which Saray talked about before, visibility um, for your association, your teams, your athletes, um, there's a lot of, of similarities there. And, and I've really loved just following Frankston on social media. And I know a few players who play there in your senior um, teams, but I don't really have... Um, a direct connection so it's been really interesting to see during lockdown the way you guys have um really been engaging with your social media obviously kept everything going um with your programs and and just the resources available to your athletes i think it's been been fantastic so i guess from my point of view you know that visibility is everything and and that's something that as um as a journalist and presenter that works predominantly across women's sport i I understand and get frustrated and get excited about that visibility when there's a lack of visibility for female sport um, particularly basketball um you know the WNBA kicked off over the weekend and we have um a couple of victorians in action ezzy madvigor made a, a wonderful debut um for seattle but you wouldn't really know it looking in the media here today, sadly. And um, unfortunately, I feel like if that was an NBA rookie from Melbourne, um, you know, it would be quite prominent in the media this morning, this afternoon and tonight. Um, So I guess that's one really immediate example. But I think um, social media is huge and we all have it, whether it's individual, um, individually we have it or you know, Frankston having their accounts and then, you know, looking at competitions and leagues. Um, And the thing I love about social media is it's a bit of a blank canvas to do whatever you want with it. But 
um, it's free. Like it's an advertising tool. You can tell stories as to Raid No, she's a great storyteller. You can tell stories and um, all sorts of things through images on Instagram. Um, there's so many ways to use it for, for the positive and for that visibility. And I find it so important in what I do. Um, with my work and um, I've got a bit of a, a side passion happening, you know, at the moment, which I'm happy to talk about um, during this chat. But yeah, I just think it, it's so important that visibility and I guess we can try and um, rectify the balance um, or imbalance with, with the equality um, by visibility. And sometimes we've got to be the drivers of that. I think social media is a great tool to be able to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And we're, yeah, we're really lucky to have a pretty strong presence on, on social media. Um, but you're right. Yeah, we, we, we play a role in that. Um, we have a captive audience of, of, you know, 500, 450 odd junior blues players and then another 9,000 members overall in our community. So what we put out there, you're right, is, is what people will sort of take on and, and sort of see that. And, and, and that is kind of forms their opinion moving forward. And, and I understand the underlying message of um, that visibility. I think that's really poignant what you've just said. So I appreciate that insight. That's, um, that's terrific. I wanted to ask another quick question, just in terms of from my perspective, but maybe from an association perspective, I see a lot of associations and we don't currently do it. And I think I would like to, to go down this path, but it's probably a pretty direct question, but a lot of associations do say um, girls only programs or, or women's only programs or, you know, um, pink ball tournaments or, or, or programs and things like that. And Saray, do you might be able to talk a little bit about this because I'm sure like um, previous teams you've played with, maybe even the South side, you've had camps and programs and things that have run like that. Do you see that as um, something that is, um, you know, powerful to use that, uh, to be offering those sort of programs or, or do you think it's not really necessary? What, how do you guys feel about that? Do you want to, I was, um, this is what I'd say to that. If we look at it from an accessibility point of view, I think it's definitely a relevant option to explore. If when we look at like girls only programs or even like sometimes women's only space, it's what it's trying to make are like spaces where people feel safe enough to come and access resources or access opportunity. So I definitely think that those kind of avenues, if it, for anyone, they make someone feel more comfortable or make it more likely that they come and get involved. I definitely think that's something to look into. My person, I've been very, very lucky throughout my career, and when I say career, even my junior career, whatever, that I've been treated with a lot of respect as a young female athlete, and I've been able to play against the boys, and I've been um, given those kind of opportunities, but I'm sure there's so many young girls out there who've never really been instilled with that kind of confidence, and so for them to try and break into a sporting code whatever it might be even physical exercise is so daunting that they'd rather not do it like if there's not enough support there and there's not enough yeah again opportunity or access something that is something that they can get into I think we lose a whole bunch especially girls like we're very vulnerable to as a community to losing girls participation so yeah I've just sort of repeated myself but I think it is valid to <laughs> to look into Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, that's really good feedback. Um, Megan, do you have any opinions on, on those type of programs? Do you, do you think there's, there's certainly worth pursuing something that, that needs to be looked at across, um, you know, associations and community sports in general? Yeah, definitely. And I think Saray hit the nail on the head in terms of um, those participation numbers. And we do see them drop away, you know, at particular ages um, with females in terms of that participation. So I guess, it's kind of twofold. It's getting them to the sport and getting them engaged and participating and then trying to um, keep them there. So maintain it and then, um, you know, trying to avoid that drop off. So I think, yeah, having that inclusive, welcoming environment, I think basketball does it really well, um, probably better than most sports. And, and I say that having had a bit of an insight into um the evolution of women's football. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not a new thing that AFLW is. Um, and, you know, <laughs> we don't have the issue really in basketball where there are, are change rooms and toilets that 
um, are not able for females and, and young girls to use. You know, there's things like that that are huge issues um, for females in football. So I think, you know, women have been playing basketball um, forever and they're trailblazers. And I think as a sport, basketball um, have been leading the way for a very long time. So, yeah, I definitely think um, anything we can do to um, get girls into the game but then keep them there um, is worth looking at. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, for sure. yeah, that was a, that was a selfish question from my perspective. That's just a little bit of personal. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, don't, we don't currently do anything in that space right now. And 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 me being a male administrator at a sporting club, wasn't sure whether that might be a good avenue to um, to explore. So I'm glad I asked that question because it's something that I really want to start to provide, and it's something that can be actioned pretty quickly. Um, especially in lockdown, funnily enough, we can just bang, click our fingers and we've got a girls only Zoom session Tuesday morning or Monday morning or whatever it might be. So um, that's really good. I'm glad I asked that question. So I appreciate your <laughs> feedback, both of you. Um, I think I, I don't have any other questions for either of you today. I, I, I really appreciate the discussion and for, for, for you giving up, both of you giving up your time. Um, I understand we're in lockdown, but we are still finding ways to keep busy and, and both of you work, um, I know, in, a, in a, a range of different sort of um, places and fields and, and have a, a range of different interests. So I really appreciate you coming on today and giving us your perspective and, and your voice right now for sport. Um, from my from where I sit and my perspective, Saray, you know, I feel you're a terrific leader for our club, um, mm. but for all of our juniors and people. <laughs> Um, I know that in, in community in general, um, you're seen as a leader and a voice for that for that space as well. So I really appreciate you both coming on, um, giving up your time. And, and I hope that our Junior Blues do tune into this and we'll do a bit of a narrative and get it up online. And I hope that they, um, they're able to, to tune in and, and take something away from this because I certainly have. So thank you both. Thank you for having us, Megan. Thank you for coming as well. It's been a pleasure Thanks. to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sarade. I think Jared's spot on, um, Frankston, are really lucky to have you um, as a role model and a player and a person. So um, my advice um, would be to your juniors is to soak up um, someone like Sarade like a sponge because she's a very valuable resource um, and you're lucky to have people like her um, and Jared at your club and getting these cool mm. videos. Hopefully we're as cool as some of the um, previous ones. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, and then I have to echo that sentiment, Megan. First of all, thank you for your very kind words. And second of all, how lucky I feel, and I know so many other athletes feel, for you being such a pioneer for female journalists, just the word you said, and I'm so glad that question didn't then get reflected onto me because I was just going to echo everything you said about visibility, like how crucial visibility is. And that is such a core part of what your job is and what you achieve daily um, is just, yeah, it's possibly the most important thing because it adds to culture and it like adds female stories and female athlete stories, whichever sort of discipline into like threads it into our culture. And if there's no visibility, it means a whole bunch of people's stories never get told. And we look back on the history books and there's not even empty spaces. There's just invisibility. So thank you for everything that you do. Um, and Jared, thank you also for just being so active. Yes, accept my, accept my gratitude. Being active enough to actually want to have these conversations and participate in them, um, engage to start them, catalyze them essentially from the position that you find yourself in, which is powerful. Um, as a male and as a facilitator in the, like um, the association of Frankston Basketball Club. But yeah, it's just so important to keep this dialogue sort of open and keep drawing people into the fold, keep connecting. So thank you. Thanks both of you. Gratitude. Thanks community. <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, you're, you're right. And just to summarize, you, you probably um, former GM, actually, I was at a, at a, at a, a night sort of presenting, uh, I think it was a season launch of some description or a community season launch for Melbourne Boomers a couple of years ago, the former GM, Justin Nelson said um, their strategy with Melbourne Boomers, sorry, Saray, not Southside at the moment, but, but <laughs> his, um, <laughs> his, uh, his, his big message was you can't follow what you can't see. So um, I try and remember that each day and, and we try and take that as a bit of a mantra for us moving forward. And, and that's what we'll, we'll continue to try and push in that space. So thank you guys again. Um, that will uh, finish up. That will be the end of our uh, sessions today. So have a great day. Um, and I hope to talk to both, both of you again very soon.
Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Blue.